please welcome our first speaker, Yanni Chambul. He is based here at the Femte Institute in France, but of Cameroonian descent, who will give us an African perspective on light for economic development. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. We are learning a lot of uh, very interesting physics. I learned that Johnny Miller likes rap. I think that we can exchange uh, playlists, because <laughs> I do too. So um, my name is Jan Chembo. Uh, I am a scientist at the French Council for Research. Excuse me, can I have my slides, please? Thank you very much. OK, so my name is Jan Chembo. I am a scientist at the French um, Council for, for Research, and um, also a researcher at the Femto Est Institute. It is in Besançon, in the east of France. And I'm also a member of the African Physical Society. And uh, today I would like to talk with you about this event, the International Year of Light, from an African perspective, or should I say from an African economy perspective, because I would, I would like to uh, talk with you about how this event can have an impact in African economy. So um, when we talk about Africa, we need to have some numbers uh, in mind. The first one is that Africa is a continent of 1.1 billion inhabitants. Half the population lives below the poverty line. The life expectancy is not even 60 years, and 25% of the population is illiterate and or underfed. So whenever we talk about Africa, we absolutely need to have these numbers in mind in order to know if the vision and the actions that we are actually doing are, are of any relevance. But uh, when you talk about Africa, there are also other numbers that are very important that should not be overlooked, particularly when you want to assess the impact of light-based technologies. 10 to 20% of African wealth is based on telecommunications today. It is the second largest uh, mobile phone market in the world. There are much more mobile phones in Africa than Africans. 70% of the population is under 25 years. So it's a very young continent. It's the youngest continent. 50% of Africans live in a city. So it's a very urban population. And most importantly, African wealth is expected to double within 10 years. So yes, when we talk about Africa, we are talking about a continent that is struggling with basic issues, but we also talk about a continent that has a tremendous potential and that can benefit from um, the impact of light-based technologies. So let's take a very concrete example. Let's try to assess the impact of a light-based technology, and here I've chosen optical fiber telecommunications. So here you have a map of, um, of Africa. And um, you have the optical fiber cables that are surrounding the, the continent and that are providing broadband access. Um, what we can do is try to see what is the impact, actually, of optical communications in a particular country. And I will, of course, choose Cameroon, which is my home country. So Cameroon is a country that is just here in the central of Africa. It's bridging the West, and West Africa and Central Africa. And it is also the home country of the best uh, soccer team in the world. And uh, I hope you take me seriously. Yes, we always feel like we are the defending champions of soccer. And by the way, there is the African Nations Cup uh, actually ongoing in Guinea, uh, Equatorial Guinea and Cameroon plays tonight. So if you want to see explosive soccer, I invite you to, to watch the Cameroonian game uh, tonight. So um, to give you an imp a snapshot of what um, Cameroon economy is, because before assessing the impact of optical communications, we need to know more or less how the country is doing economically. So Cameroon is a country that is um, more or less the size of France. It's 20% smaller than France, so more or less the same size. It's a country of 23 million inhabitants. Um, it is, of course, a poor country, but when you try to rank Cameroon inside sub-Saharan Africa, its economy is number six over 45 countries. So um, in black Africa, it is rather on the rich side. And, um, 
beside producing geniuses in soccer, Cameroon is also an oil producer. And we sell for $1.5 billion of oil every year, and this is 50% of the economy. So this is just to give you a snapshot of what Cameroonian economy is. So now let's try to see what is the impact of optical telecoms in this African economy. Just as a reminder, the budget of Cameroon is $6 billion. It means that the government needs $6 billion to run the country on a yearly basis. So right now, um, the telecommunication turnover is $1 billion. This is already 15% um, of the economy. All is 25%. Telecommunications is already 15% of the economy of the country. There is an ongoing project, Optical Fiber Backbone, whose objective is to deploy optical fiber in, within the country and provide access to 70% of the population. And it is a $700 million project. And the expected turnover after the Backbone project is $3 billion. So this is 50% of the economy of the country. I'm not talking about something prospective. I'm talking about something real that is occurring right now. And this is not everything. Actually, last month, that was December 2014, there are new investments that have been announced. And this was $4 billion in 10 years. So I wanted to give you these numbers because I think it's very important to know and to understand that when we talk about light-based technology in Africa, we're not talking about something insignificant. We're not talking about something marginal. We talk about something that is already very big and that can power 10, 20, 30 percent of the economy of African countries. So here, um, I took the example of optical uh, fiber communications, but I can actually talk about other sectors, like, for example, solar energy. So um, most of you know this, this image of, of our planet. It's a picture taken at night. And you can see that uh, in the night, Africa is the darkest continent. You can also view that from the positive side and say that Africa solved the problem of light pollution. That's, that's the way to say it. That's the way to say it. Um, and I was actually in my, in my village one year ago, and, and, and I was, could actually see the Milky Way. It's very rare when you live in Europe, actually. You, cannot, you can barely see the Milky Way anymore. So I was in my village and, you know, feeling poetic, talking about the Milky Way, and people were like, yeah, whatever. So um, except North uh, Africa and South Africa, Africa is pretty dark in the night. And 70% uh, of the population actually does not have uh, access to electricity in sub-Saharan Africa. But if Africa is the darkest continent during the night, actually it is uh, the brightest continent during the day. I think that Professor Chu yesterday gave very solid argument in, in favor of that. And um, the point, the challenge now is to harvest all this solar energy and transform it into electricity in order to power African economy and social life. Um, right now, Africa is producing around 300 megawatts of solar energy per year. Uh, in 2010, it was 40 megawatts. In 2018, it's supposed to be 2.2 gigawatts. The target is seven. And um, the experts believe that with this um, mark of seven gigawatts of solar energy, Africa could start to bridge the gap as far as access to electricity uh, is concerned. So uh, what could be the big impact of an event like this one for African economy? Well, in my modest opinion, this year has to be the year um, of training in photonics technology in Africa. I hope that I convinced you that um, photonics technology are already relevant for African economies. When you have sectors like optical communications, uh, solar energy that can already power 10, 20, 30 percent of your economy, you need people to operate in these sectors. You need researchers, you need engineers, you need technicians. And uh, right now, Africa is lacking this workforce. So we believe that this uh, International Year of Light can provide the incentive to the policymakers to uh, be aware about the fact that they absolutely need to invest uh, in training in photonics technology. So at this moment, there are um, already uh, a certain number of centers that are active in Africa, like, for example, the African Laser Center, uh, the LAM network or the CEDIC Center. The CEDIC Center is a center, I work with them actually, and um, it's a center that has been funded by the World Bank, and it's an African center of excellence for information um, technology. And there are, of course, other centers, but in Africa, we already have centers that are working in the area of photonics technology. Uh, we also have um, partners, international partners. I personally believe that the most important of them is ICTP. It's a key institute as far as academia in Africa is concerned. 
I have two PhD students in Africa that are going next month to receive some training over there, so it, it's a very important partner for most um, African scholars. I would also like to highlight here the um, impact of um, student chapters, OSA and SBIE, um, the help that they provide to the young students in, in, in developing countries, and particularly in Africa is very important because it allows for these students to have a network to be connected to know exactly what is going on um, as far as optics in, is concerned in other research centers. So this is very, very valuable help. And of course, I've focused um, essentially on optical communications and solar energy because time is limited. I cannot talk about everything else. But beyond telecoms and solar energy, um, training in photonics is needed for many other uh, areas uh, in Africa such that um, industrial and individual applications, medical applications, or agriculture. For example, I'm working with a young scientist in, in Cameroon. He has a project, and he's actually received a prize for that. He has a project where he wants to monitor the quality of fruits and vegetables with, with lasers, tomate, courgette, etc. So many fruits and, and vegetables in Africa that are getting, um, that need to be monitored um, very, very accurately. But, um, here, of course, I've talked, we are talking about life for development, and I have uh, insisted a lot on the economical aspect, how light-based technologies can be helpful for uh, African economies. But there is another aspect that, to me, is also very, very important. Um, everything is not about development. Uh, when I was a high school student in Yaoundé, in Cameroon, or even when I was an undergrad over there, I didn't want to solve the problem of light in Africa. I wanted to be an astrophysicist. I was reading Stephen Hawking. I was arguing with my friends and my cousins about what a black hole is, and, and that was my life. And um, we say that half of the population in Africa lives below the poverty line. It means that half the population lives above the poverty line, and they have other concerns. Um, I remember, for example, that um, last year, and if you, we can go up to two years ago, um, the hot topics in mainstream media, as far as science are, is concerned, was the neutrinos going faster than light and the Higgs boson. Honestly, both theories are very, 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 very complicated and actually very far above what average people can understand, but people were fascinated by that. And I think that not only in Africa, but in the world, we should not give the impression that we know everything. That's why they think that scientists are so boring, because they talk like they know everything. People are in awe when they realize that actually the story of light is not told, that we do not know everything, that there are still mysteries. And I think that we need to um, have that in mind and, and still be the storytellers of light. So I would like to thank um, the organization of the International Year of Light, particularly as far as Africa is concerned, the leadership of Ghana. That was very important. I would like to thank UNESCO for hosting us here. And thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.